just wanted to do a little in cap video today. We're almost done on this tile project. I haven't had a whole lot of time like I thought I would to make some videos here. It's a pretty complex project we've been working on. So we're working on the, we've got five more runs to do. We've done, I believe 250 out here. And uh, come a long ways. It's very impressive to be doing this on December, I think it's December 5th today. But as you can see, I just want to show you what the egg leader screen looks like, just to give you an idea of what the install process looks like. So on the bottom here, we have our profile. So that's from the survey I did. So as soon as I finish a pass, um, when I'm heading back down to the other end to connect, I'm surveying the next pass. And so what we're watching here, this is our, our auto tile grade depth showing us if we're higher or lower on zero. And quite honestly, they heard bump quite a bit, a little bit. Usually that holds zero for a long time. Um, the grade is, it, held, it holds so good when you're running a base station on a soil max plow. We're on a pull type plow. Uh, we, you know, we're hooked onto the hitch, pulling it with a quad track here. 1100 RPMs, first gear. And that gets about 1.5 miles an hour, so you can see we're holding zero again. The frost is messing with me a little bit. Every once in a while, a frost chunk will push up on the plow, and that's where we'll get that 0 0.1, 0 0.2 increase. Uh, but that's 0 0.1 of an inch, 0 0.2 of an inch. Realistically, that's that's acceptable grade loss. Uh, you can see we've done 922 feet, so you're getting some stats. 920-ish, 920, 930 feet. We've 1.3 feet of rise, we're at 40 inches or so for depth. And we're just kind of looking at my overall map. You can get a live view too on this egg there screen. You can just pull in and it's really not a whole lot to look like look at at the screen on the map side. So that's kind of why I usually like to look at the overview, see what we've done. And that's pretty much the install process. Only other cap controls that we have in here that are for the soil max plow are these two boxes. This one on the left is running my power feeder. And then this one is just the plow control. So that's what lifts the plow up and down at the end of the run. And then this is our float control. So when we're when we're going, the wheels are in float. Kind of hard to see the sun right now, but it's running a constant down pressure on those wheels. So right now, if my plow were to pitch up, there we just hit a rock. So mark that rock. It didn't throw me off on my uh, on my grade at all, but. We just like to mark them so we can come find them and pull them out so they don't... Now, now that we've pulled them out with the plow, it'll be a problem next year. But back to the way this plow works, is we're always... You run it and float, but the float has a constant pressure on those wheels to help balance the plow. So if I were to start pitching up and the plow would start coming out of the ground, the wheels would automatically, just with that constant pressure, would lower and stable that plow out. So. A lot of people have questions about how good a pull type plow is. We actually, I mean, I absolutely love it. It's easy to use. And in this case or scenario, our quad track broke down um, on Friday and we rented this quad track and we were in this, we had this whole thing switched over in this cab in an hour and a half. So it's just easy to use, easy to move around and it's simple. So just like this, we've probably, I don't know, I'll probably have over 100 hours of, of plow time. I'll, I'll figure it out and, and update the stats later on here. But it's an, e it's an easy process. Anyone can do it.